on my last video, I talked about how I AQ my headphones using the Harman Curve target. And of course, I've been receiving a bunch of questions, but there's that one question that always kept coming in. And it's basically, where do I put my headphone AQ inside Cubase? So I'm gonna show you what I do on my side, uh, what you can also do if you don't use the same Cubase version I do, and also the way I use headphone EQ, even if I'm not working in Cubase. And also the number one thing you never do when mixing with headphone EQ, which is basically uh, the... Let's jump right in. I'm using Cubase Pro. In Cubase Pro, we have a very cool thing called the control room that I talked about on this channel. So I'm gonna leave some links down below if you wanna check it out. But if you're using Cubase Pro and you're not working with the control room, I'm telling you, you need to. There's a cool thing inside the control room which allows me to add plugins, okay? for monitoring purposes. So if I uh, open the right zone in Cubase, whether I'm working from the uh, project window or the mix console, I'm gonna have access to CR, which stands for control room. And at the bottom, I'm gonna click on the inserts tab and I have eight insert slots I can use to add plugins. And the plugins I use inside the control room are monitoring type plugins. And this is the perfect spot to use a headphone EQ, like the one I use on my side. It's also a very good place if you work with plugins like a room emulation plugins for headphones, like uh, real phones, for example, you can actually insert that plugin inside the control room. I also use graphic analyzers for the same purpose. And the reason is very simple. And this is actually one thing you should never do when mixing using headphone EQ, is to bounce that EQ when bouncing your mix, okay? So that's why working with the control room for that purpose makes a lot of sense because it's not gonna bounce at the effect of some of these plugins like the headphone EQ when bouncing your mix. So it's kind of a protection at the same time. So if you're not using Cubase Pro and you're using Cubase Artist or Elements, or you're simply using another DAW, so what you can do is to insert your headphone EQ at the end of your mix bus chain. Not before, you know, at the end, but as the last plugin of your mix bus chain. And the reason again is simple, we're using that EQ as a monitoring tool and not as an EQ that you add on your mix, okay? But it's an EQ you add only to monitor through your headphones. And the same goes if you're using Sonarwork Sound ID for your headphones or your studio monitors, add those plugins at the end of your mix bus chain, okay? And make sure you bypass them, and this is important, make sure you bypass them when you're exporting your mix, okay? Again, they are only used for monitoring purposes. Now, whether I'm using my studio monitors or my mixing headphones, I like to use them outside Cubase the same way I do when I'm mixing inside Cubase, meaning that when I'm listening to my Amazon Music streaming account, I wanna to listen to that music with the same EQ profile that I use when I mix music inside Cubase. And if this is not something you actually do, you should consider doing the same. And same goes for my studio monitors. I have calibration going on for my studio monitors and it's always on whether I work in Cubase or I work outside Cubase. So that is the best way to learn your studio monitors well, so you can make the right mixing decisions every time you start mixing, because you know them well, you know how they sound like, whether you work in Cubase or you're listening to music outside Cubase. And same goes for mixing headphones. So if I use my headphone EQ inside Cubase, I'm gonna wanna use the same EQ profile outside Cubase. So I get the same reference point when I mix inside Cubase that I have when I'm listening to music outside Cubase. A tool that I work with that achieves that very, very efficiently is called Sound Source. Now, this is not a sponsored video whatsoever. I actually paid uh, for the software, okay? It's a Mac-only software. Unfortunately, there's no Windows version, but I'm gonna give you one free tool you can use as far as uh, EQ goes. will work well on Windows, so stick around for this one. Uh, but as far as Sound Source goes, it's a very nice app you install on your Mac. It's gonna take control of your Mac audio output in a very cool way. And the very nice uh, feature we have there, because I didn't dive into uh, th this app that much, apart from what I use it for, and that is to be able to insert plugins inside SoundSource outside my DAW. 
and this is actually pretty cool. Uh, so what I did is I um, inserted my Pro-Q3 EQ, built my EQ curves, uh, saved it as a preset inside the plugin. So I have access to that preset, whether I'm working in Cubase or SoundSource, which makes it very, very easy to work with. And from this point, I'm good to go. And I also have can opener inserted inside SoundSource, the same as I have inside Cubase, which is gonna fix the crossfeed of the headphones. There's something cool you can do here also. Uh, if I add an effect, I can select uh, within the built-in effects, one the one called headphone EQ and I can select a profile. And to get the profile, you go into the Audio EQ app under the custom parametric EQ, like we did on the, uh, on the other video, and you can save that profile. You name it to the name of your choice, and you import it straight into SoundSource. Select profile, there you go. So I have like a bunch of them right now. I select this one, and this is the one I apply. In that case, I'm gonna remove the other ones, maybe bring this one up. And that's it. The only thing is to make some adjustments. You'll need to go into the text file and manually make the adjustments and reload the profile. So, you know, that, that part is a bit slow, <laughs> to be honest with you, but it's doable. Uh, but for me, it was way easier to just to use the Pro-Q3 as a plugin. And the reason why I'm using this one, first of all, you know, I have it, so I might as well use it. And that the sound source will not give me access to load some stock plugins out of Cubase. So if I wanted to use frequency as my headphone EQ inside Cubase, I won't be able to load it um, straight into sound source. So the Pro-Q3 or any other uh, VST3 plugins will work inside sound source and also, of course, in Cubase. So just use the same EQ from one to the other if you decide to go that route. Uh, the cool thing also with SoundSource, uh, and this is something I'm still experimenting with, is that you can actually use it uh, when you work with Cubase also. So in that case, I could bypass my uh, headphone EQ and can opener in that case and just use it straight from the SoundSource app. Okay, and that will work. Now, as far as the stability goes, it seems to work okay when I work with Cubase and SoundSource at the same time. I did happen, to be honest with you, it did happen once where I ran into a kind of a bug where I needed to close SoundSource and reopen it again. But I'm still experimenting with it, with this type of workflow while working with Cubase and SoundSource at the same time. Now, on the Windows side, there's a free app you can download. It's not like sound source, not as advanced for sure, uh, but this one is called, let me check, Equalizer APO. I never tried it before. Maybe some of you have. If so, let me know how it goes in the comment section below. From my understanding, it's an EQ you install straight in Windows, and it's gonna be applied straight uh, on the output level of Windows from what I can understand. So that could be a good way you can EQ your headphones uh, when you're working outside your DAW. So if we look at the selection we have for EQ apps inside AudioEQ.app, we have the uh, Equalizer APO. So if I select uh, this uh, parametric EQ, I can actually download the profile and load it inside Equalizer APO. And on top here, it tells you how to do it inside Windows. But again, I never tried it on my end, okay? So I don't know if it works well, what are the downsides, or if there's any. If some of you have already worked with uh, Equalizer APO, let me know down below. Some audio interfaces, like the one I'm using, the AXR4 by Steinberg, will give you the ability to insert an EQ, compression, uh, and stuff like that, you know, on output channels which is cool. On my side, I don't use it because the EQ I have access to is a bit limited for, you know, uh, EQing headphones, so I just skip it. But with some of the most recent RME audio interfaces, uh, they have a room EQ. You can insert on several outputs straight from the, uh, the audio interface itself. So that makes this option a system-wide solution to add an EQ on and EQ your headphones. And on top of EQ, they also have a crossfeed <laughs> option. Uh, also, you can add on all output channels, uh, which is great. So if I had one of these RME interfaces, I would probably use that feature to EQ my headphones. But whether you're using an audio interface like the RME system uh, to add uh, your headphone EQ, or you're using sound source or equalizer APO, or straining Cubase in the control room, you'll always have to keep in mind that at some point you'll need to bypass those 
those plugins. So for example, if you switch from your headphones to your studio monitors, you'll need to bypass the plugins. Whether you're using the plugins inside Cubase or in SoundSource, you'll need to bypass them before jumping on your studio monitors. And same if you're using more than one uh, pair of headphones, you'll need to switch profiles at some point, you know, when switching headphones. So these are little things you'll need to pay attention to and to always keep in mind. So let me know on your side, how do you work things up when it comes to EQing your headphones or when you work with uh, calibration for your studio monitors? Do you use everything inside Cubase or your DAW or you just use an external app or maybe you have an RME interface, let me know down below. And if this is the first time you hear me talking about EQing headphones when mixing, you need to watch this following video. Until next time, take care, my friend, and see you.